prayers. So, Amen. man, I tell you, you don't want to get sick in Shelby, North Carolina. <laughs> you do not want to get sick. And uh, I really thought I was going to die. I told my, my wife, I, I did. I thought I was going to die. You got Dr. Fungus up there, don't know what he's doing. And her doctor's called that she works for says, man, you need to get him out of there. And boy, I started getting scared when they tell me, get him out of there. And anyway, we faked it and got home, got on some good prescribed medication. Got back to the house, and I'm still dealing. I still have that uh, cyst on my pancreas. It's about a little bit the uh, size of a golf ball, and hopefully it'll get it drained. And they still have a biopsy. They don't think it's cancer, but thank you for your prayers. Um, one thing about camp is when you come, to, I don't know, there's real spotty self-service everywhere around here. And so you go to bed, and you wake up, and you get bad news. Amen. And um, I got up this morning. Of course, my phone, bad news. Uh, I got a thing that it said that uh, Chuck Norris, y'all know Chuck Norris, right? He got bit by a cobra. After three agonizing days, the cobra died. So y'all pray for the snakes. (laughs) Pray for the snakes family, amen? (laughs) We like telling Chuck Norris jokes at our church, amen? Um, Have y'all heard the one when he was born, he slapped a doctor? I mean, he's so bad when he was born, he drove himself home from the hospital. <laughs> but anyway, um, this morning, I want to uh, talk to you. Uh, take your Bibles and go to the book of Psalms, and uh, I, I'll try to keep it teachy, maybe a little preachy this morning. Um, I do appreciate your pastor, and he's, been, uh, he's come to our uh, church and done a revival, and um, I appreciate him doing that. We don't have a lot of folks, but the people we do have, uh, it's been a blessing and a joy to be around them yes, the last sir. three years. Yes, and um, our kids, and don't now don't don't let me down, but uh, these kids have been a joy to be with. Yes, uh, yes. There's no drama, yes. Amen. Yes. I ain't had to worry about no drama. Yes, uh, they wanted me to tell them a night night story last night. <laughs> They all got in their beds, and I said, once upon a time, I turned out the lights. <laughs> uh, but anyway, um, Psalms chapter 78, and uh, I'm sure you've heard a message or something taught on this, but, uh, you know, camp, camp is a special time. This will be our 20, how many years? 24th year going to camp. Uh, unfortunately, I, I did miss last year because I was back in the hospital with pancreatitis, but I had went to camp at another camp. And the first camp I ever went to was Camp Harvest in 1998. And, uh, you know, I, I fell in love with camp. And I've seen God move in camp yes. on young people like, I, like I've never seen him move. <laughs> Now, I'm not saying he can't move in the church. I, You know, he can, but I think it's just something about getting separated. And uh, your phones don't work up there. And uh, you, you're just able to concentrate on what God's got, got to say to you. And uh, listen, I was walking the other day, and I told my wife this, and I mean this all. I, I pray that none of these children ever have to walk in darkness. Never, never had to know what heartbreak is. That's right, man. man, I'm telling you, you don't want to ever walk in darkness right, and heartbreak. Right. And if there's anything I could uh, in, encourage you to do is stay with God. Yeah, yeah, sir. Because I, I, I'll be honest with you, I've, I've had to walk in heartbreak and I've had to walk in darkness. Right. And it ain't fun. No way. Yeah. Psalm 78, verse 40. The Bible said, how oft did they provoke him in the wilderness and grieve him in the desert? Yea, they turned back and tempted God, and they limited the Holy One of Israel. Now, these verses, verse 41, you find they turned. How can you turn on God? You say, well, preacher, hey, listen, I I know. I I know. I know it's easy to blame God. It's easy. Because, I mean, 
you know, instead of placing the blame somewhere else, it's always God's fault yeah, right. when things go wrong. Listen, God didn't do it. Yeah, right. If anything, God's been better to us than we've ever been to Him. That's right. yeah. But they turned on Him. And not only did they turn on Him, they tempted Him. Yeah. Now, I don't know about you, but I ain't got the guts to tempt God. Yeah, right. I had a girl one time when I was preaching at a detention center. She got mad because she couldn't sit on the front row. And she got really upset, and they had to sit in a certain thing. So she got mad, and she started hopping pews. And she got up to the front, and then the security guard, he come in. He was a good security guard because he had mama tattooed on his arm. Amen. And he come in, he drug her out. And she took her Bible and she threw it across the chapel. She cursed God all the way out. And uh, all them girls were applauding her. And I said, I tell you what, won't some of y'all, I, I said, uh, some of y'all must be mad at God. Won't you just stand up and shake your fist in his face? And you know what? My wife was there. They started standing up, one of them shaking their fist in God's face. I don't know how they got the guts to do that. They tempted God. They turned on God. And they tied God. They limited God. Now, how many of y'all in here with a hearty amen believe, believe this verse right here? Luke chapter 137. I'm going to read it. For God, with God, nothing shall be impossible. How many of you? Hey, that's, that's not just a, a what we would call a charismatic verse. That's a Bible verse. With God, with God, with God, nothing shall be impossible. Y'all believe that? Yes, sir. How about this one right here? I like this verse. Ephesians chapter 3 verse 20. Now unto him that is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we ask or think according to the power that worketh in us. Yes. Who believes that verse? Yes. Now he said he could do above and yes. beyond. That's right. Listen, this week, you know, we don't know what God can do, but we know he can do exceedingly abundantly above what we can ask. We don't know if God's going to touch a young man's heart and be called, called to preach. We don't know if God's going to touch some, some soul that's lost. Amen. But I know this. I know we're going to have the atmosphere set right so God can move. So they tempted God, they turned on God, and they tied God. And this is, this is, by the way, God's people. This ain't the world. This is God's people. Now I want you to look with me in verse 42. Because God demonstrated his power to them. They remembered not his hand, verse 42, nor the day when he delivered him, them from the enemy, how he wrought his signs in Egypt and his wonders in the field of Zoran, and he had turned their, their rivers in the blood and their floods that they could not drink. He sent the divers sorts of flies among them which devoured, and, devoured them and frogs which destroyed them. He gave also their increases into the caterpillars and their labor into the locusts. He destroyed their vines with hail and their sycamore trees with frost. He gave up their cattle also to hail their flocks to a hot thunderbolts. He cast upon the, the, them the fierceness of his anger, wrath and indignation, and, and trouble by sending evil angels among them. He made a way uh, to his anger. He spared not their souls from death, but gave their life over to the uh, over to a pestilence. And he smote all the firstborn of Egypt and the chief of their strength in the tabernacles of Ham. You know what God did? He demonstrated their power, his power to them. Right. He exercised judgment on their enemies, the ones that were oppressing them. Amen. Right. God demonstrated that, and yet the verse 41 said they tempted him, they turned on him, right. and they tied him. God demonstrated his power. Yes, he did. Now I'm going to tell you, I've been in the ministry now, I've been preaching for 25 years, and I've seen God's power. Yes, I've seen God's power. Right. Now, I'm not talking about somebody throw a songbook across the thing and run around the building. That ain't what I'm talking about. I've seen the power of God fall. Right. I've, seen, I've seen God move in ways that I, I can't even get up here and explain to you because it was God. You can't explain God, amen. I just know I've seen God's power. 
any of his own people turned on him, tempted him, and tied him. And I, you know, I, I don't, all I know is I know what God's done in my life. You know, he said, somebody get up and give a testimony. All I know is February 11, 1996. God saved me. Not only did he save me, he demonstrated his way. He saved my marriage. Amen. Uh, he, he put our home back together. He put me in church. Amen. He, he gave my, me and my wife a relationship. All I know is only God could have done that. And I heard an old black preacher the other day, man. I'm telling you, boy, he, he, he was talking about how the church has become a monument. And he said, if you make a church a monument one day and you don't give your faith to your children, it'll one day the church will become a memory. Yeah, that's right. And boy, when he said, man, I, I got chill. I don't know if he's a Baptist or not, but it was good, amen. Yeah. And uh, he said, not only that, he said, you need to let your children know about the power of God. You need to let them know uh, not only did why you in church, but what put you in church, amen. Yes, Boy, I'm telling you, he got to go and he said, and I'm, I'm assuming he was preaching about what mean you these stones. And I'm telling you, you need to tell your children. Right. These children need to hear your testimony. Yes. They need to know that my name is written there, yes. amen. Right. Uh, my kids, if my kids were here, they're all grown now. If my kids were here, they could tell you the date their daddy met God. Amen. As a matter of fact, they don't know just, they only not only know the date, they can take you to the place where daddy met God. Amen. I've had people say, well, preacher, every time you tell your te testimony story, it's always the same. Yeah, it only got one of the testimony story. Amen. Hey, man, wouldn't you be a little bit worried if one, one time I come in here and said I was saved on July the 4th, amen, in 2001, then one day I was saved February 11th. Hey, man, I only got one testimony. I met God. And God done something. He demonstrated his power in my life. And I do not want to turn on him. I do not want to tempt him. And I don't want to tie God. Look in verse 52. Not only did he demonstrate his power, but God made his own people to go forth like sheep and guided them in the wilderness like a flock. And he led them on, the sa on safety so they feared not. But the sea overwhelmed their enemies and he brought them to the border of his sanctuary, even the, to the mountains, which, he, he, which his right hand had purchased. He cast out the heathen also before them and divided an inheritance by the line. May the tribes of Israel to dwell in their tents. Not only did he demonstrate his power, he demonstrated his provision. Yeah. Tell you something, God can provide. Yeah, amen. amen. And I'm going to tell you something. Now, I can stay up here all day, which I know I can't, but I can tell you all day about how good God's been to yeah, me. Amen. You say, well, preacher, you talked about walking in the dark. He's still been good, amen? Yeah, yeah, right. Amen? He's, listen, he's never forsook me, yeah, right. amen? He's right. never left me alone. He's yeah. always been there right. in dark times. Now, this is what I want to teach you, preach you this morning on this thought, limiting God. Mm -hmm. Just limiting. What would limit God? Look at Mark chapter 6. Yes, sir. Mark chapter 6. <laughs> I sure am glad. I, I'm, I've made it one day yeah. on camp so far. Amen. Yeah. We, we, have, we have two new guys with us, uh, JB and Brylan. I hope I'm saying that right. Did I, did I call you right, JB? Yeah. All right. And yeah, we got two new guys with us. Amen. We left the, we left the thing and said, all right, camp's over. We're going home. Yeah. <laughs> but anyway, we got two new ones with us this uh, week. And I'm, I appreciate them coming. Yeah. And uh, I, I, I just want them to know we, we, we love our kids. And yeah. Yeah. we just want to see God work in their life. Yes, if you'll fall in love with him, he'll never, he'll yeah. never let you right. go, go, go wrong. Right. Amen. Mark chapter 6, verse 1. When he went out from thence, he came into his own country. Now this is the Lord. Mm -hmm. And his disciples followed him. When the Sabbath day was come, he began to teach in the synagogue. And many hearing him were astonished saying, From what has this man these things? What wisdom is this which is given unto him, that even such mighty works are wrought by his hands? Now, here's the first thing I notice. Look in verse 3. Is this not the carpenter? Yeah, right. The son of Mary, the brother of James, and Joas, and Judah, 
and Simon and not his sisters with us uh, here with us. And they were offended at him. Now, you know what they just said? They didn't see him as God. They saw him as a little carpenter boy. This is the carpenter. They saw him as an earthly person. They saw him as the son of Mary. And by the way, that verse teaches you she, uh, Mary wasn't a perpetual virgin, I think I'm saying, amen. He had brothers and sisters, amen. So uh, anyway, I, I said that wrong, so my wife looked at me, but it's all right. Son, I'm, I, I just turned double nickels. I, if I can't pronounce it by now, it ain't going to happen, Amen. <laughs> I finally got my first singing discount. I was excited about that the other day. But they were offended at him. They were offended at him. Look at verse number 4. But Jesus said unto them, A prophet is not without honor, but his own country and among his own kin in his own house. Now look at verse number 5. He could do there no mighty works, save lay his hands upon a few sick folk and heal them, and he watch it, and this is the Lord, and he marveled because of their unbelief. He went around the village teaching. Now, I'm gonna be honest with you, Jesus showed up in Hamlet. I mean, or Gordo. If he showed up, uh, showed up in them places, I sure wouldn't want to limit God. I wouldn't want to tempt him. I wouldn't want to turn on him. I wouldn't want to tie him because we got too many problems going on right now to have a God tie. Right. And the problem today, everybody wants to blame the Democrats. It ain't. It, listen, stop looking for government for our answer. We need to look at God. And God's people, listen, God's people, I can say this, has limited God, number one, because of their unbelief. We just don't believe God can bring a revival to America. I've heard people say, America's gone, America's gone, America's gone, America's gone. And you know what? If you got that attitude, you're tempting God, you're turning on God, and you're tying God. I don't believe America's gone because I still believe that with God, nothing shall be impossible. If I believe that, why even go to church? I mean, if I believe that, why rent a van, bring all these kids up here if I didn't believe God could do something in their life? Look, unbelief, unbelief. You know what unbelief done in this scripture? Number one, unbelief limited God's movement. God couldn't move. Now, I'm going to tell you this week, God, we got to get God, uh, we got to let God know that he has free course and that we're believing. Now, I don't, I don't know no, no situations here. The pastor don't call me and say, hey, preacher, let me tell you what's going on in the church and make sure you hit the, we, I, I don't do that to the preacher that, that comes in. He ain't done that to me. I don't know what some of you are facing this morning. I don't know if maybe you got kids that ain't here or you got a husband that ain't here or a wife ain't here. I don't know all that, but I'm going to tell you, you need to believe that God can. Yes. I've been preaching a lot about the prodigal uh, son's father. Now, I'm going to tell you, he was a failure. Mm-hmm. Now, you, what, what do you mean he was a failure? He failed to give up. Yeah, that's good. He failed to give in. Yeah, yeah, right. He failed to give over. Yeah, that's good. And I'm going to tell you something, friend. This morning, God cannot move there because of unbelief. Right. You're limiting God's movement. Good. Now, I like a good shouting out service. Uh, man, yeah. but I tell you the best service I've ever been in when you couldn't even hear a pin drop. People were on the altar and they were sobbing and weeping and getting right with God. Now, I'm going to tell you something this morning. Unbelief limits God's movement. He said in verse number 5, and he could do do there no mighty works. Do you believe God just showed up and said, you know what, I ain't going to do nothing for these folks? No way. I believe God went there looking to do something. And the people get there and they said, oh, they, they, ain't this the carpenter? Mm-hmm. I mean, he, the Bible said he was, he was marveled. Yeah, right. I mean, he, was, uh, he marveled at their unbelief. Mm-hmm. Not only that, in verse number 5, again, he said, and he could do no mighty works, save lay his hands upon a few sick folk yes. and heal them. Not only unbelief limits God's uh, movement, it'll limit God's miracles. Now, when you, you throw the word miracles out in the average Baptist church, they think you're, you're going 
uh, charismatic. I'm not going charismatic. Uh, do y'all not still believe in miracles? I, I believe in miracles. Amen. I believe. Um, I, 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 this ain't in my notes, but I thought about this passage last night. Go to Matthew chapter 28. Now, the context of Matthew, Matthew 28, he, this is after the resurrection. Okay? This is after the resurrection. I was thinking about this passage last night when I was trying to go to sleep on the rock. Amen? <laughs> it wasn't the rock of God. Amen? It was a rock of the bed I was on. Amen? <laughs> By the way, I took Miss Hansel, I did tell him that that is a good place out there. Uh, I would just bring an egg one of them egg things to sleep on. If you're old, if you're double nickels, you need one of those. But Matthew 28, look at verse 16. Now, uh, I'm going to do like your preacher. The, then the, how many disciples went? What's the Bible say? Eleven. Now, do y'all know who those were? Uh, that's the inner circle. The eleven disciples. Went away into Galilee, into the mountain where Jesus had appointed them. So they obeyed him. He, he told them to go there. And look at verse 17. And when they saw him, they what? Worship him. They worshiped him. That, that, that's good. Yeah. I mean, but look, look what he says after. But some what? Did I read? That maybe, maybe I'm reading it wrong. There's 11 of them that went with them and they worshiped him, but some doubt it. Yeah. Some doubt it. You know, this week, God might blow into place and there'll be some of them saying, what are they doing? Yeah. I mean, what in the world is all that going on for? I, I've been around meetings like that where God's blown in and people just over there and I don't know if that's of God. Well, I mean, look, I'm not God's, uh, I don't work for his CIA. I don't know. It, all I know is I'm not going to get up and criticize what God now, if it ain't, sometimes you can try the spirits. I understand that. Yeah. But I'm going to tell you something. They were worshiping and some doubted. Yeah. The 11. It don't say which 11, but they doubted. You know, Matthew chapter 17, don't turn there. Verse 20 says, And Jesus said unto them, Because of your unbelief. Verily I say unto you, If ye have faith of a grain of a mustard seed, ye shall say unto this mountain, Remove hence to this place yonder, and it shall be removed, and nothing shall be impossible unto you. That's right. You know what this is telling me, and I just preached a message last uh, couple of Sundays ago on faith. You don't have to have a lot of faith. Yeah, right. God didn't say if you had a huge amount of faith. That's he right. said if you just had a little bit of faith. Yeah. Yeah, right. Amen, I've got a little bit of faith. I, I went to the doctor Tuesday, and he said, you know you still got that cyst. I said, yeah, but I'm going to camp. Yeah. He said, well, let me write you a prescription. <laughs> I said, I'm going to camp. Man, I, I'm, I'm, tired of, I'm tired of not living. I'm telling you, sickness, when you get sick, you don't live, amen? And I'm tired of not living. You've got to have some faith. Hebrews 11, 6, you all know this verse, but without faith, yeah, it is impossible to please him. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is, and he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Right. This week, God, we could limit God, we could tie God, we could tip God, we could turn on God. If we have unbelief. Now look at uh, Isaiah 59. Let me show you the next one. Isaiah 59. I'm glad y'all got a clock I can see. Amen. Yeah. Uh, there's one church I preach in Louisiana. They ain't got no clock. And then they, the preacher said, man, how long are you going to go? I said, well, put a clock. Now I don't know when to stop. <laughs> the next day the, the deacon had a clock. I mean, you, you could have seen that from space. <laughs> Isaiah 59, look at verse number 1. Behold, the Lord's hand is not shortened, yeah, right. that he cannot say. Yeah, Neither is ears, ear heavy, that he cannot hear. Yeah. Now, you know what he's saying? I can, I can still save and yeah. I can still hear. Yeah. Yeah. But watch this. That's it. Verse 2. But your iniquities right. have separated between you and your God... And your sins had hid his face from you that he will not hear you. So number one, 
what would limit God, amen, uh, unbelief, number two, unconfessed sins yes, sir. Yeah. will limit God. Yes, it will. Now, we can go through the motions this week. I mean, I, I've been in camps like that. They just went through the motions. I don't want to be the reason God don't move. No way. Yeah, right. no way. So I've been trying to get, you say, oh, preacher's hearts get back. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. I mean, y'all think we're, we're infallible? Mm-hmm. I'm fallible. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Hey, I got, a, I got flesh. That's right. And by the way, if Paul struggled with the flesh, so do you. Yeah, sure. Amen. Paul wrote a, almost a whole chapter yes, in Romans yeah. about struggling with the flesh. He yeah. said, the things that I should do are the things that I do not. Amen. Right. He had a problem with the flesh. Right. Amen. You said, well, preacher, I mean, I'm just telling you, I didn't want to come to camp Rome with God and then spend half the week trying to get right yeah, with him. Right. So what happens when you don't confess your sins? Look in, uh, let me read those two verses again. But the Lord's hands are not, is not shortened that he cannot uh, save. And his ears not heavy that he cannot hear. But your iniquities have separated between you and your God. I tell you what happens. Unconfessed sins uh, causes walls to be built. Yes, sir. But I'm going to tell you something. You don't want a wall between you and God. No. You don't want a wall. Because I'm going to tell you something. You, and I, I tell young people this all the time. And moms, dads, you listen to me. There might come a time in your life you're going to need God more than you need your next breath. Yep. Right. And you better, not, you, you better not have to take three or four days to try to get right with God. Mm-hmm. Amen. Good. It'll build a wall. And I don't want walls be, built between me and God. Psalm 68 uh, 16, I'm sorry, 66, 18 says, If I regard iniquity in my heart, the Lord will not hear me. Right. I've had people say, Well, God ain't talking to me. You confess your sins. Yeah, right. Right. I was preaching a school revival in a Christian school. I got through, and a young lady come. Everybody had left. A young lady come, and she, she come up to the front, and she was shaking really bad. I thought she was having a medical condition. And nobody was in there but me and her. And I, I said, well, I said, sit down, sit down. Because I, I really, I thought she was, she was having a seizure. And I went and got uh, somebody and she come in there. And, and uh, she talked to her for a minute and she come up. She, she stopped shaking. I said, what's wrong? She said, God stopped talking to me. I mean, it had put her to the point that I thought she was having a minute. That God was no longer talking to her. Man, I don't want to get to that point where I can't hear God. Not only will unconfessed sins cause walls to be built, number two, unconfessed sins will withhold blessings. I'll be honest with you, I like to be blessed. Man, I just had a birthday. (coughs) Sam, I'm I'm expecting that package, buddy. (laughs) Don't get up here, don't get on the altar and say you're going to send me a birthday package and it don't show up. He said he'd rather you not make a vow. <laughs> don't y'all, how many of y'all, we got a birthday girl in here today. I'm not going to tell you who it is because I don't want to embarrass her. We're going to have one tomorrow. I'll be honest with you, I like birthdays. Don't y'all? Yeah. I like getting stuff. My mom passed away uh, February the 18th. I watched her take her last breath. I don't recommend that, by the way. That, I'm glad I was there. I wrote my mom a poem. I might read it this week uh, to the kids. I wrote her a poem. I, my, I wrote the poem. My wife said, where'd you get that? <laughs> I said, I wrote it. What do you mean? Where I, I, ain't heard that, I ain't heard that kind of talk since <laughs> you're 18 years old and love me. You know, and stuff like that. <laughs> That's the only amen we're going to get from her all week. <laughs> Talk about the goodness of God, you can't get no amens, but you talk about the but anyway. <laughs> and uh, you gotta know my mom. My mom was uh, where's Angel at? Angel in here. She was a redhead. Oh Lord, help us. Yeah. I'm just telling you, there's something about redheads. You don't mess with them, they'll cut you. They don't care. I mean they'll smile and cut you at the same time. <laughs> And my mom was my mom was very unusual, but one thing and we were we were real poor growing up. But she always made sure we had a good Christmas and a good birthdays. One year, 
uh, I was in my 20s. Me and my wife was married. And she said, I want you to come over for your birthday. And I said, all right, Mom. I come over, and I love birthday cake. Okay? So I'm excited about whoever's having a birthday because I get birthday cake. Amen? <laughs> but uh, I get the birthday cake, and I start looking at it, and it don't have my name on it. Uh, you got to know my mom. It had happy birthday. Now, I'm in my 20s, little man. <laughs> I said, Mom. She said, oh, somebody at the bakery didn't pick it up, so I got it on sale, you know, and I'm thinking. <laughs> and so when my mom passed away, I had a cake, uh, and I remember that cake. I'm going to tell you something. You'll remember things. That's right. And I've had 55, probably 50-something cakes, but that's the one I remember. I remember everything about it. In the middle, it had lemon icing or lemon fill. Man, boy, I'm talking about that's making me hungry right now, <laughs> thinking about it. And so this year for my birthday, which was July the 6th, Sam, um, <laughs> I had a cake made just like that. It said, happy birthday, little man. And, uh, you know, just that was a blessing to me. Yeah, right. But, you know, our Heavenly Father, he wants to bless us. Yeah, amen. Don't you think, don't you really think that God wants to bless this year's camp? Yeah, right. Don't you think he wants to move right. amongst sure. us? Sure. Don't you think that God wants to perform a miracle right. in somebody's life? You know why? Because he wants to get, he wants the glory, amen. amen. Yeah. Uh, he wants people to know, as David said, when he went to face Goliath, that they may know that there's still a God yeah, in Israel. Right. You know, we get all these bad headlines, and we get all these uh, teenagers doing all these crazy things, and amen. And But you know what would be refreshing to know that there's still a God yeah. in Israel? Yeah. And you know, we're not going to be able to do it with unbelief, amen. And we're not going to be able to see God move for unconfessed sins because the Bible says in Jeremiah chapter 5, verse 22, your iniquities have turned away these things, and your sins have withholding good things from you. God wants, listen, this is not a charismatic message. God wants to bless his people. Yeah, right, right. Amen. But we've tipped at him, we've tied him, yep. and we've turned on him. I don't want to tempt the Lord. Sure. I want to tie the Lord. Right. Unbelief, unconfessed sins, last of all. And y'all get out real early today so y'all can get that money paid. Hey, Amen. <laughs> Uh, is found in 1 Timothy chapter 2. Look, look, look there with me. I'm talking about undoubt, uh, unbelief will cause God to limit God. Unconfessed sins, but 1 Timothy chapter 2 verse 8. I would therefore that men pray everywhere. Lifting up holy hands without wrath and doubting. I, had, I was coming home from church and I'm going to preach this message sometime this week. And I had a lady call me. My wife wasn't with me. She, uh, I think she was watching one of the grandkids and he was sick. And she was distraught. I mean... There was nobody from my church, so y'all, I wonder, was it my mom? No, <laughs> nobody from faith. She was distraught. And, uh, man, I just, you know, sometimes you just got to listen. And uh, she's going on and on and on about the situation, and this is what I told her. And I want y'all to listen. I, 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 know, I know what I'm talking about here. There's some things I don't. I told her the hardest thing you're going to have to do is let God, let, let God have it and pray. Yes, sir. And you say, oh, that's easy. Uh, okay. <laughs> if we went around the room and we just were honest with each other, right. a lot of y'all still holding on stuff y'all ain't yeah, let go of. Right. <laughs> now, y'all have heard the analogy of Isaac, Abraham bringing Isaac. Now, Brother Tim Ellis said this, so I'm going to give him the credit. Brother Tim Ellis said not only did he believe that God could bring him back, 
bring Isaac back. He was going to sacrifice him. But Isaac just wasn't going to slit his throat. I mean, Abraham just wasn't going to slit his throat. He was going to burn him up. Do y'all understand that? He was going to burn him up. And I'm going to tell you something. It's easy when things are going good and you don't have to pray. But there's going to come a time you're going to have to pray. And I, I put this down. I don't even know if it's a... I'm just trying to homiletically get this thing to work. Unaffected prayer. Yes, sir. It's going to limit God. And they, the, 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 listen, I, yes, over the past four years, I thought I knew how to pray. Mm-hmm. I didn't know how to pray. Mm-hmm. I've lost... Well, I don't use the word lost. We buried Tanya's mom. We buried my mom, I buried my stepdad, I buried my aunt. All of them's gone. I've had health issues, and I'm telling you, I laid up in Shelby, North Carolina, and all I could do was pray. You know what I thought in that bed, brother? Boy, how many times, how many, all that time I've been wasting and not trying to pray. My grandmother, which y'all never have the blessing of meeting her. My grandmother was saved 80, how many? 80. She was saved, not lived. She was saved 80 years. She died at 93. She gave her life to God. Uh, at 13 years old. She moved to Birmingham from Mounville. Y'all know where Mounville is. She did, the people, they know where Mounville is. They're from my place. She met a man named Jimmy Hale. Jimmy Hale was known in Birmingham as the worst drunk. I mean, this is, this. you can look this stuff up. Worst drunk at Birmingham. He went in the tabernacle one day and he used to come in and get warm, come off the street. The man was preaching. He's preaching and that day Jimmy Hill walked out and got saved. And the deacon tried to stop him as he went forth. He said, oh, that's Jimmy Hill. He'll be, he'll be drunk before he gets out, out the door. And that day God uh, stepped in my, daddy's, uh, my granddaddy's life and saved him. Amen. He got a burden for his drunk buddies. That he, he, he was also a bartender. He, he got a burden for them and he started a rescue mission that's still going in, in Birmingham today. And God sent Jimmy Hale, my grandfather, my grandmother, and they met and they got, they got married. And within six months, I opened the rescue mission. My granddaddy died of cirrhosis of the liver. Be not deceived. God is not mocked. Whatsoever man soweth, that shall also reap. He, he didn't get to see the fruits on this side. Right, right, right. But I say this about my grandmother. My grandmother was the most godliest person I've ever met in my life. Every time I would go over to my grandmother's house, she would call me in the back, and my wife can confirm this. She would call us in the back, and she said, Y'all come in here and sit down. I want to tell you about the day you, your granddaddy got saved. I said, Nanny, I've heard that story. <laughs> Thou, you're going to hear it again. Yeah. But she would, call, she would call us and said, I want you to know, listen to me, I've prayed for you today. And this is when I was out living like the devil. And I remember one time I called my grandma. I'm talking about, I'm talking about prayer. Yeah, right. I, was, I had left home at 16. And I'm ashamed to say this, but I spit in my mother's face. My mom died of dementia. And I pray that that's one member she forgot. 16 years old, I left home. I got out in the world living like the devil and I needed money. And maybe some of y'all don't know, though I hope you never have to know what I'm saying. I needed some money 
And I made the decision I was going to call, but if my grandmother answered, I was, was going to hang up on her because she's going to preach the devil out of me. And she answered the phone. And back then, we didn't have call waiting, amen. I mean, this generation, they think you know, they're smart. We only have one number if we had to call uh, police. It was zero. Now y'all got to have three, nine, one more. We just dialed zero. Hey, I got to have an ambulance out here, amen. <laughs> and my grandmother answered, and I was fixing to hang up. She said, Scott, is this you? She said, boy, is this you? I said, uh, yes, ma'am. She said, I've been praying for you today. She said, I want you to know if you die and go to hell, you're going over a mountain of prayers and an ocean of tears. Mm. Boy, she, every day she prayed. Every day she believed. The day I got saved, the first person I called was her. I said, hey, Nene, she said, you don't have to tell me. I know you got saved. You know why? Because she believed in God. She didn't limit God. She didn't, because of unbelief, because she didn't have to get right with God because she tried to keep a short account with God. She didn't have these lay me down to sleep prayers. She prayed for me. And she prayed every day of my life. For 40 something years she prayed and prayed and prayed and prayed and prayed and prayed prayed some more. And when she couldn't pray, she she just uh, uh, sat there and she thought and she prayed and she prayed and she prayed. And then she died. She died. 2010. And I had to preach her funeral. And I got up and I preached about her rock. I said, if Nene knew we was talking good about her, she'd come out of that coffin and slap every one of us. I said, so I know what Nene, Nene will want me to tell you about her rock. And my grandmother was well known. She, she's got letters from the presidents of the United States. We had senators there. We had all kind of dignitaries there from the state of Alabama. Let me tell you something about me. Can I walk around? I don't, I, is it all right? I know it's Sunday school hour. We were in this big church, and I led that. They rolled that coffin out. This is what I told them when I, I the last thing I said, I said, I'm not going to miss Nanny's cooking because she couldn't cook. That's one grandmother didn't know how to cook nothing. Hey, Amen. I mean, she, if it, it got cooked, it burnt. She said, oh, it'll be hard. Just put some ketchup on it. Amen. She fixed hamburgers one time with black eyed peas in them. And she supposedly got this recipe because it was supposed to stretch the meat. See, I see that old timer back there. Yeah, but she didn't mash them up. <laughs> you got to mash them up. And then you fool everybody. I said, but I ain't going to miss her cooking. I ain't going to miss that. I I am going to miss her telling me about all them stories. But this is what I said. This is the last thing I said, Britton. I'm going to miss her prayers. Now I'm walking down that. The lady, old lady steps out. She steps out. And as I'm walking, my grandmother's behind me. And they're, they're pushing her out. She stepped out of the audience. And she grabbed me by the hand. She said, well, your grandmother left off. I'm going to pray for you the rest of my days. Amen. I'm going to tell you something. This limited prayer that we're doing and this lustful prayer that we're doing, you know, we're praying, give me and forgive me. That's what our prayers consist of. And I, I'm guilty of it. I'm guilty of it, but I'm going to tell you something. We're limiting God. My grandmother heard me preach one time. One time. Now, my grandfather, he preached, and they called him the tornado. That's what they called him. I heard a guy, my, uh, I pre- my first revival ever preached. His daddy preached with my daddy, my granddaddy. 
And he was telling me about my, my granddaddy. He said, your granddaddy preached. He said, he sweated. Oh, God, he sweated. Oh, he said he sweated so hard that you could hear, you could hear sweat sloshing in his shoes as he preached. And this is what my grandmother told me, and I, I'm, I'm through. This is what she said. She said, I'm glad you got saved. She said, I'm glad God called you to preach. And I, she heard me preach one time and was coming back. And I, I didn't really want her to critique me. And she just laid her hand on my leg and said, you preach just like your granddaddy. And that's what she told me. But I'm going to tell you something. That prayer, she knew that I was out doing wrong. She knew that. Because you know what? When you're out sin, sometimes you'll flaunt it. And I flaunted it. Do you know what? That didn't faze her. And I'll say this. I, I know what, but I got two minutes left. She was dying. Me and my... Uh, Wife and my kids went and we went and sung to her. My kids had just learned the instruments and we sung. The last song we sung to us, what a day that will be. When my Jesus I shall see, when I look upon his face, the one who saved me by his grace. I walked in there that morning and I said, Nene, how you been doing? She said, oh, the tempter's been here. The tempter's been here. He said, she, she said, he's been trying to get me off my prayer list. She said, but he ain't going to get me off of praying for this list. And boy, she pulled out a list. She's praying for people I ain't never heard of. But see, she believed in God. Yeah, right, right. She didn't want to tempt. She didn't want to tie. And she didn't want to turn on God. That's right. Good. She just believed that God could. Amen. And the one thing I'm so glad of is that when I she passed from death until life went on to be to he with heaven that her grandson that she prayed for was saved Amen. Amen. I don't know what your situation is I don't know what you're facing but I know one thing maybe you say it's, it's impossible preacher then you're doubting because God said with God nothing shall yeah, be impossible right. Say, so, well, preacher, he's above, he'll be able to do above yep. and beyond yep. anything we could think or say. This morning, I'm going to turn it over to the preacher. Don't limit God.